Web 2.0. Innovation. Trend. Collaboration. Metadata. Software. Metadata. Got the world turning as fast as it can? Hear how technology can help, legally speaking, with two of the top legal technology experts, authors, and lawyers, Dennis Kennedy and Tom Mile. Welcome to the Kennedy Mile Report here on the Legal Talk Network. And welcome to episode 234 of the Kennedy Mile Report. I'm Dennis Kennedy in Ann Arbor. And I'm Tom Mile in Dallas. Before we get started, we'd like to thank our sponsors. First, thanks to Text Expander for sponsoring our show. Communicate smarter with Text Expander. Gather, perfect, and share your knowledge. Recall your best words instantly and repeatedly. Learn more at textexpander.com forward slash podcast. And we'd also like to thank ServeNow, a nationwide network of trusted, pre-screened process servers. Work with the most professional process servers who have experience with high-volume serves, embrace technology, and understand the litigation process. Visit servenow.com to learn more. In our last episode, we were joined by a special guest, good friend, and super fan of the podcast, Debbie Foster of Affinity Consulting. And we talked about technology competence, what's happening on the ground in legal tech at law firms, and much, much more. Lots of fun and great information for everyone. In this episode, we decided to do an homage to one of our favorite resources and talk about some of our favorite cool tools. Tom? What's all on our agenda for this episode? Well, Dennis, in this edition of the Kennedy Mile Report, we will indeed be talking about cool tools, what makes a cool tool, and some of our favorite cool tools. In the second segment, we'll continue our obsession with cool tools and cover some of the ones we couldn't get to in our first segment. And as usual, we'll finish up with our parting shots, that one tip, website, or observation that you can start to use the second that this podcast is over. But first up... Cool Tools. We are longtime fans of the Cool Tools website, which is cool-tools.org. Um, they have a book also called Cool Tools. They have an email newsletter called Recommendo, which is a fantastic newsletter that we've talked about several times on the podcast. Um, and then, of course, they have their own podcast, the Cool Tools podcast, hosted by Kevin Kelly and Mark Fronfelder. I think this podcast may set a record for the number of time that we say cool tools just in the introduction alone. But other than the fact that we love them, that we find usefulness in talking about cool tools, what got you interested in this topic, Dennis? Well, Tom, we were at uh, Tech Show and they did the uh, the famous 60 and 60 session. And you told me, because uh, I was uh, working the concierge desk at the time during the session, that uh, no one mentioned cool tools as a resource. And that was much to my horror. And I've been especially enjoying some of the recent cool tools podcasts. And I, I just thought it would be fun to pay tribute to to cool tools and uh, and share some of our favorite ones. Well, I have to say, I don't think that Cool Tools is well known in the legal community. I ask people about it. They don't know about it. So I think this podcast is a great way to introduce a lot of lawyers and other legal professionals to it. And the show format's going to be pretty simple. We're going to talk about tools or gadgets or websites or other things that are useful to us, things that we find help us. And it does not require that it be a tech tool. It can be any kind of tool. It's just something that helps us get a job done or do something that we need to get done. Did I miss anything, Dennis, And how to explain what we're talking about? It seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, there's a social no, notion of cool tools. It's something that you would you find it just feels right. You use it for a long time, and you wonder how you lived without it before before you found it. And it can take a variety of forms. And I think the ones we're we're going to talk about kind of show the different aspects of tools. So uh, why don't you get started with your first one? So the first one I have actually, I think, was a, a cool tools uh, recommendation itself, and it's the OXO. Good Grips Jar Opener, um, and it runs about $13 or so on Amazon. So the notion is, if you think of, uh, we all have trouble opening jars. And I actually learned recently that uh, there's a wide variety of grip strength that people have, and there's a huge difference between men and, and women. So I've noticed as I get older, some jars and lids are really starting to become difficult to get rid of. And, and I'm calling you out Diet Pepsi by name on that one. So the Good Grips just takes a notion. It looks like a, a ping pong paddle, a small ping pong 
long paddle, uh, maybe a little smaller than that. It has like a V with some geared teeth in there. And you just put it on, slide it over the uh, cap that you're going to take off, or the lead you're going to take off, and you until it snugs up uh, you know, at the right width. And then you use the leverage of the handle to open uh, jars and bottles and everything else really easily. And... Um, it's amazing. So no more pounding, uh, you know, jar lids on the the floor or on concrete or all the other things that you you used to do. It's just you know, put this on, pop off the top. It's pretty darn amazing. And my my first and and maybe the best uh, in some ways example of just a cool tool because it it works. And I don't know how I lived without it. And I always want to have one uh, with me. So I have to say that I'm used to the jar openers that I have tend to be the free circular rubber discs that I get like in mail with a calendar or something or that someone gives me for donating and I get a free jar opener. It seems like what's really valuable about this is, is that the, the handle of it gives you some leverage to, to be able to, it gives you something that I think that the, the, those rubber discs don't give you and makes it a lot easier to open any kind of jar. Yeah, so you get the tightness uh, on of the the tool on the lid and the leverage, and I would say roughly it's an order of magnitude uh, better than those rubber uh, circular things that uh, we all used to use. I used to use, and, and a lot of people still use. And and so I'm looking at you mentioned the OXO Good Grips with a base pad. What's the difference between the base pad versus just the regular OXO Good Grips jar opener? They, they it looks like there's two of them, and they both they look different. Do you know the difference yeah, between just, the two? I'm not. I can't believe you stumped me on the first one. I don't know what the uh, base pad <laughs> is. I don't know what the base pad. The the other one looks like it clearly doesn't have a quote base pad, but I don't know what the difference is. But you're clearly recommending the one with the base pad. So yeah. everybody out there, ignore the good rip, grips jar opener. Go get the one with the base pad. The difference in price is literally two dollars, so it's not a big deal. Right. So what do you got, Tom? All right. So my first one is something that I've actually talked about on the podcast before, but I love it. And it was actually brought up during uh, 60 uh, Tips in 60 Minutes, um, although it didn't, they didn't give the whole story. And that is the Everlast Rocket Book. Um, I don't write a lot. I don't write with a pen anyway. And so I don't have need for paper in my life, but I have occasion where I do have to take notes, where I do have to keep track of stuff in written form, but I don't want to do it and waste a lot of paper, and that's where Everlast Rocket Book comes into play. They have three different versions depending on the size that you want. There's an executive size, there's a legal size with legal sized paper. It's the biggest one they have. The executive one is more fits in the hand, and then there's a mini one that looks a little bit like a reporter's notepad, traditional notepad. Um, and the paper that's inside them is erasable. It's erasable. You have to use a certain type of pen to be able to use it. Um, but when you're done with it, when you're done with the page, when you're finished writing on it, you can literally, each each notebook comes with a uh, little chamois rag. You can moisten that and wipe the page and it wipes clean in, instantly. And you let it dry a little bit and you can reuse that paper over again. So these notebooks don't have a lot of pieces of paper in them or they don't have a lot of pages in them, but on the theory that you don't need a lot of pages to use this. And so I I use these. I have one of every size because I'm kind of trying them all out, figuring what makes the most sense. I have the executive one at my desk at home. It never travels. And I take the smaller ones with me. What's interesting is the one that they mentioned at at ABA Tech Show was the, the Rocket Book Wave, which actually you can use, you can erase the entire contents of the notebook by just putting it into your microwave. Um, And then you can reuse it five times. The difference between the Wave and these other Everlasts is that the Everlast will actually last much longer than five times. You you can only put the Wave in the microwave five times and it'll erase completely. But uh, I could see spies using that, Uh, you know, get rid of of incriminating information, just put it in the microwave. But I'll tell you, I am totally sold on this. It is my writing, my writing pad that I have everywhere. And like I said, I bought them all because I, I have a use for them wherever I happen to be. So I have two comments on this because you did talk me into trying this um, and I just started using it. So there are two things that are worth mentioning, I think. One is uh, what sold me is the app that comes with it. So you can just like scan it, scan it in. 
So, so I, I, it's that whole system that, that works together that I think is, is really interesting. And that's why you don't need many pages because you do a page and you scan it in and it has some icons on there to, on the pages to help you and, and uh, all sorts of different things. So that's what I'm exploring. And then the other thing, you, it's the, these f- friction pens um, which are erasable, which it could be – they were very close to being a cool tool for me. So you can erase them. You can, as Tom says, you can microwave them. Now, if you just have regular paper, not even this book, but using those friction pens, you can microwave them and erase what you have on there. And then the amazing thing, if you want to impress your friends, is you can then stick the paper that you've erased in the microwave into the freezer, and the writing all comes back. So that's that's pretty amazing. But I think it's uh, th- what I like about the Rocket Book and why I want to try it is because it it does fit the need. Sometimes you do want to take notes, you just want to grab them, and it's good to write. You know, you're in a situation where it makes sense to write, and you can just scan them in, and you got it. Um, and I like that. I think that's the really cool thing is if you need to scan in the paper um, and you need to keep a copy of it, you can do it to OneNote or your Evernote workbook or Dropbox or any number of places you can scan it in. I just don't keep that paper. I, I use paper in a different way. If I want to keep something, I'm usually typing in my notes, but um, I think that makes it even doubly valuable. So, all right, Dennis, what's up next? So, uh, one of the things about the Cool Tools podcast is it seems like there's probably been about 25 or 50 different tools that people use for making coffee. So, I'm a tea person, and I use this thing called the Tivana Perfect Tea Maker. This is essentially a, a gravity-fed strainer. So it looks like a little, like a very small Brita pitcher. It has a screen down at the bottom. You put your loose tea in. You put the the hot water in there. Uh, set your timer. Uh, I I put uh, cream in my tea, and so I have a cup. I put the cream in it at the bottom. So here's a little trick for people if you didn't know this: if you put the cream at the bottom, you don't even have to stir because of the the, the way that uh, uh, physics and chemistry work. Um, and then when you're ready to put the tea in the cup, you put this uh, this pitcher on top of the cup, and it drains by gravity. Um, strains all the tea leaves out and boom you have a perfect cup of tea without messing with bags or anything else and uh, it's amazing so I like that you combine it with my favorite horny teas in the uh, Contigo travel mug and you got a great hot tea experience every morning Okay, when you put this on the list, I didn't realize that this wa- that it was called the perfect tea tea maker um, I use this religiously for a while when I was drinking tea. I'm kind of go in and out of drinking tea. And I think this thing is awesome. And and it's so it uses gravity, but it uses it in an interesting way because there's a spring. I mean in the bottom of the of the tea maker, there's a little spring that when you put it on top of a cup, it depresses the spring so that it's releasing whatever it is that opens up the bottom of the tea maker that drains straight into the cup, which I just think is genius because it's not going to happen until you press it on top of something. Otherwise it just sits there. Um, I've, I've loved this tool and whenever I drink tea, that's what I would use. I think it's a, I think it's a great thing. I, you know, the unfortunate part is, isn't Tivana out of business? I think they've, I think Starbucks closed them all down. They're not, they're not doing anything anymore. So get your hands on this through Amazon or something, because I don't know how much longer it's going to be available. Well, there are other makers, but this one is the one I use and I like it. And it's, I just saw it on Amazon. I think it's like about $16. So, uh, for, if you're not a tea drinker, you should be. And, uh, if, if you are, um, this is is a, a really great way to use, uh, like I said, loose tea, which is uh, cheaper to use that way, and uh, not the fuss and mess. It's just better for the environment, right? Not to be opening all those tea bags. Tom, what's up for you? All right, so I I hesitated to put this on the list because I talk about it on the podcast all the time, but this is literally a tool that has become something I can't do without at work. And it's Microsoft Teams. Um, We are not a Slack shop. We're an Office 365 shop and Teams comes with it. And we spend a lot of time storing records on SharePoint. And it has turned out that all the consultants that I work with really enjoy using Teams to um, collaborate with each other, talk to each other. They've stopped going to SharePoint because they can access all the documents in SharePoint through Teams. We can 
just click a button and we can share our screen with somebody instantly and say, here's what we found. I'm using Microsoft Planner tool to assign tasks to people and you can, they can access their tasks in Teams. It's kind of a Kanban board type of thing that they can use to do that. It is, I think, just the perfect way to integrate Office 365 and to talk and, and collaborate on things. We have a, a number of our clients have started using it and you can invite guests to do it. So I've been invited to other cl- companies' teams to be able to talk to them. We've cut down on the use of email as a result. We're not emailing each other everything. We're certainly keeping documents out of email. And you know, I think that for anybody who's using Slack, you probably heard all this, you've seen all the benefits, you know all the benefits. To me, the difference is Slack doesn't integrate with Microsoft the same way that uh, that Teams does. And to me, that's really the benefit of using Teams over Slack. I agree with you, Tom. It gives, and there are some places that just won't, the IT department would just won't allow Slack. So that's right. I think the Microsoft gives you this great collaboration, or Teams gives you a great collaboration tool that will be approved in your IT in, environment. And that's a big plus. And it, you've gone through the many benefits, which I uh, I, I agree with with all of that, and I would say the same thing about Slack as well. But there's that extra benefit. Do you know if they have anything planned where it will, like, identify the people who aren't doing the tasks they're supposed to, and like force them to do that? Because that would be like a great, a great feature to add to that. No, you are responsible for going in and saying your progress on a task or whether you've completed it or not. It does send reminders out if people aren't doing it. You know, the way that you look at it is you say, uh, you, you can see if it's still there, then you must assume that it's not done yet. But no, it doesn't have, I, I want it to get smarter. And I suppose most of these tools are getting smarter, but so far we're not there yet. All right, what's up next? So my next one is uh, an example of a tool where you're taking a standard tool and using it in a different way to in, uh, to kind of customize to something that you need. And so I don't know what time was like a year, year or so ago after me whining for a long time about trying to manage music in iTunes, you convinced me to go to a streaming service and, and I picked Spotify. So people use the streaming for a lot of different things, but what I've really started to use it for is for ambient music and for uh, what I'll call work soundscapes. So I look for, you know, I will say there are playlists, there are albums, there are all sorts of things that you can do to say, oh, I want music for relaxation, I want music for creativity, I want uh, music for productivity, you know, I want to have the room I'm in uh, sound like I'm in a spa or have some kind of zen feel. And so I think those soundscapes can be really helpful. So like if I'm doing mind mapping or other things, trying to get ideas out, I play creativity music in the background. And it just seems like I produce a lot more ideas. Uh, so Spotify, lots of different uses. We all we all know them. But this use in the, the sort of work environment, especially if you're in an open office where you're wearing headphones, that's great. But I work from home and it's just like I create this little workspace that's kind of tuned to the mood I'm in or what I want to accomplish. You know, and the nice thing about Spotify is how dirt cheap it is lately. I mean, we we have a family account that is 16 bucks a month for up to, I think it's up to four or five people on that. They're testing a, an account now where you, um, where it'll have two people can be on an account for even less, probably nine or ten dollars that they're having. Um, I think I saw a deal lately that if you get an account with Spotify, you get Hulu, the TV service, for free. And that's crazy. Um, so I, mm-hmm. I think it's it's a good time to have streaming services, wh- whatever you're using. And Spotify really is taking advantage of that. It's another great use of either, uh, you know, your headphones or an Amazon Echo or, or the Google speakers and or other speakers. And uh, it turns your uh, workspace into a, a little oasis. Tom, what do you got? All right. So one of the tools that I found that I've used a lot more lately is when years ago, when the power goes out or if we just wanted to light a candle or use or do something that required a flame, um, I used to keep a matchbook collection. I don't know about any of y'all, but I kept matchbooks from different places that I visited. And 
I don't even know where they are anymore. I'm not, I don't know if I got rid of them. I'm not sure what happened to them. We certainly don't smoke, so it's not that I, that, that I am keeping them for any reason. But I needed something to be able to provide a flame. And I found the TacLife electric arc lighter. And there's actually a couple different versions of this. Um, but it is a battery-powered lighter. I mean, you can go to the grocery store and get one that's got butane in it. And it's only got a few charges. You, it, only, it lasts for a while, a good long while. But it's a real flame. And, uh, and it goes out after a while, the Tac Life electronic electric arc lighter is rechargeable, and the the one that I've been using for a real long time is actually the size of a USB drive, and it kind of the, the end of it kind of looks like a taser, and it, it sends out an electric arc, and you can just put that right over a candle wick or whatever you're trying to light, and it brings up a flame in just seconds. Um, the arc lighter itself, the larger one, um, is much larger. It has a kind of a retractable. Uh, not retractable, movable, bendable nozzle on it. So you can get into hard to find places if you need to do it um, or different types of lights, that are candles or other lights that need lighting. It's a 26, what is it, milliamp per hour, whatever it is, battery. It's a huge battery that's in it. It's good for 1,000 different lights and you can recharge it up to 500 times. So that thing's going to last for a long time and it's just a regular micro USB charger that you plug it into, plug it into the wall and charge it whenever you need it. I use it all the time. I think it's a great, very simple, basic tool that has solved the need that those matchbooks uh, no longer can help out with. Could you use that like if you're camping yeah. or something? Yeah, as if you well? need, I think that any place that you would use a match, any time that you would need a flame for something, this is ideal for that. If you've got to light a gas burner or something like that, you can use that for the same thing. I got to admit, when I saw this on your list, Tom, I thought you were getting prepared for uh, marijuana legalization in sadly, Texas. Sadly, sadly, I am what, not. Like a hundred and fifty years mm, off or so. No, but no. and let's let's move to the so, next uh, topic by then. <laughs> <laughs> so my fourth one is an example of something we all have, but we just don't use. Uh, or Sometimes you're not aware of it, but when you use it, it just makes such a difference. And that to me is the, this is a PowerPoint presenter view, but I also want to add the design ideas feature in uh, PowerPoint as well, which helps you make slides. But it's the it's a presenter view that to me is amazing. Because when I'm teaching, everything is done in the presenter view. It shows me the current slide. It has a timer. It shows all the slides in order so I can move around to it. It highlights the next slide. If I have notes, I could see that as well. And none of it can be seen by the audience on the screen. It's just like my own little console and it just helps me in my presentation. And having a timer there, Tom, is just like one of the, the greatest things that's happened uh, for presenters in a long time. It's like people go, wow, I didn't, I, you finished exactly on time. Like, how did you do that? It's because I got this big timer in front of me, but uh, a great tool. And, uh, you, you know, it's comes up in the apps as well, but uh, I, I can't live without it. It's just, it's just a delight to use every time I use it. Well, and the other nice thing about it is if you have a touch screen, um, you can also annotate on the slide too. You can draw, you can draw arrows, you can, you can mark it up if you need to, and then make it all go away when it moves to the next slide. Yeah. I, I love presenter view. It's, it's really a nice feature of PowerPoint. So last one for you, Tom. All right, my last one. I think I've probably mentioned this on the podcast too, but they have a new version that is really great, I think. And it's called Cavo, C-A-A-V-O. It is an all-in-one universal remote but it's not just a universal remote. It is a control center as well. And what I like about it is, is that let's say that you have an Apple TV and maybe you're using a Roku box or you have an Amazon tool that you're using and you use a bunch of different services. Maybe maybe the kids are hooked up to a gaming system that is there. And you also have either Uverse or, or one of the other cable or satellite services. What's nice about Cavo is you can plug all of these services into the main control center box and Cavo will smartly organize them and know where to go and find the things that you, wherever they happen to be that you need them. And so all I really have to do is I push a button on the remote, it opens up a microphone and I say, watch House of Cards and it knows to go 
to Netflix, it knows, it can tell that I've watched the first three episodes and to go to episode four. And it's just an awesome tool for managing the entertainment that you get. It makes it very simple, especially if you use a bunch of different tools for combining them all together and putting them into one really simple to use remote. So what's the cost on that one? Um, so it's ninety nine ninety five is the control center. The only I won't say it's a downside, but there is, and I can't find it here. There's a subscription fee to use the control service, and I can't remember what that price is, but it's something like two ninety nine a month, three ninety nine a month. It's not terrible, but that's how they. Here it is. I'm sorry, it's one ninety nine a month. It's nineteen ninety nine a year. It looks like you can get it for $60 lifetime. So if you want to pay one lifetime thing, then you're getting true universal search. You are get you can launch contents on local apps. I didn't mention it's also usable with both Alexa and with Google Assistant. Um, you can create personal lists. There's editorial content. There's all sorts of stuff available for a little bit extra. But it's, it's re I think, reasonably priced for a universal remote. So only one uh, question, and you know what this is going to be, Tom. Can it find itself when you misplace? it. <laughs> Actually, the remote can find itself. I, well, you have to push a button on the control center and you push the button and it rings up wherever the remote is. So it can't find itself, but the box can find it for you. That's probably worth the 60 bucks right there. There you go. So I know we got more time, but uh, it's, it's time to wrap up this segment, right? All right. Well, so let's wrap it up here, but uh, take a break. Uh, before we move on to our next segment, let's take a break for a message from our sponsors. Text Expander is a productivity multiplier. Lawyers love Text Expander because with a short abbreviation or search while typing, Text Expander can produce cover emails for invoices or signing instructions, insert templates for consistent meeting notes, perform accurate date math on the fly, and instantly present things you retype all the time. Text Expander runs on Macs, iPhones, iPads, and Windows and works in any application. Visit textexpander.com slash podcast for 20% off your first year. Looking for a process server you can trust? ServeNow.com is a nationwide network of local pre-screened process servers. ServeNow works with the most professional process servers in the industry. Connecting your firm with process servers who embrace technology, have experience with high volume serves, and understand the litigation process and rules of properly effectuating service. Find a pre-screened process server today. Visit www.servenow.com. And now let's get back to the Kennedy Mile Report. I'm Tom Mile. And I'm Dennis Kennedy. We had, between us, too many cool tools for one segment. So we decided to do a lightning round in which we get to briefly list four more cool tools that almost made the cut for our first segment. Uh, Tom, what's on your honorable mention list? All right. So the four that I'm going to mention very quickly, um, mostly because Dennis mentioned an OXO, OXO Good Grips in his first session, I'll mention mine. The OXO Good Grips Meat Chopper, I find is so much better at get, at breaking down ground beef, ground any kind of meat when you're trying to cook it, rather than a regular spoon sitting there and trying to cut through the meat until it's crumbled. This chopper takes care of it in seconds. And it's so easy. I bring that out. And within a few seconds, I've got all the meat crumbled up in the pan and it's ready to go. It's an awesome tool. And again, with those OXO tools, they're very cheap. They're easy to get. And I would recommend that for everybody. Tune Find is actually a uh, give credit where credit is due. It was from, I saw it from the Recommendo newsletter that the cool tools people put out. Um, I will always be watching TV and I'll hear a song that I want to save or go back and listen to. And by the time that I have pulled out Shazam to figure out what the song is or ask Google what it is, is, it's too late. Sometimes you miss that song. Well, TuneFind actually is a website that keeps track of all the different TV shows and what songs are played on each TV show. And so go to TuneFind the next day and you will find those songs and what they are and where you can download them on Apple Music or Spotify or whatever your music service is of choice. Liquisnug is my next one. Liquisnug solves the need 
to where if I need to bring liquids with me when I'm traveling, for example, I don't want to use the shampoo and conditioner in the hotel room. I want to bring my own. I might want to bring my own mouthwash, um, but I can't um, bring those bottles because they're too big. I can't get them through, through security. Liquid Snug comes in tubes that are all under three ounces, so you can put them in there. They're made out of this kind of silicone rubber that is very sturdy and very um, easy to pack. But the, what I like about it and why it's snug is, is that they have these vacuum seals at the top so that there's no leakage. I've used some tubes in the past where when I've gotten on the plane and I get off and they've kind of broken open in the bag and there's shampoo all over the place. These liquid snugs have a great seal on them. They're easy to use. And I highly recommend if you want to put liquids on a plane, um, liquid snug is the way to do it. Um, my last one, so we're doing four. My last one is another uh, utility. It's a Chrome extension called OneTab. And I've used it so much in the past two weeks, I can't even tell you. I had about 30 different tabs open while I was doing research, and it was really slowing my computer down. I use OneTab to press a button, and it puts all of those tabs into one tab and it's just links a list of links in that tab so that I can go back to it I've saved it all I don't have to worry about saving them as bookmarks but I can go back to that one tab and click on whatever I need to go to it frees up the memory it makes it a whole lot easier it's not so messy to deal with all those tabs and it's a really convenient app to use um, especially if your Chrome browser tends to crash it will save those apps that you're using just before you crash so those are mine Dennis, what about yours? So in the first of all, in the grand uh, tradition of the Cool Tools podcast, I have already added Liquid Snug uh, for 10 bucks to my Amazon wish list. There you go. And, and then I had a question about TuneFind. So TuneFind solves the other problem, which is where you're saying, like, are there some interesting songs in this show? And you're trying to read the credits, which are, like, incredibly sm small and roll by really quickly. Does it solve that problem as well? Uh, it doesn't solve that problem necessarily. No, it's that's not the problem it's trying to solve. Okay. So I have I have four as well. So one is one that I mention a lot called OmniFocus, which is my to-do list, which is uh, super great. They're coming out with a, a new version here here soon. But everything that I do is, is put on this. It has a number of features I like. The the big one for me is triage so that I can I can look at the things that have rolled up for my day and I can say, yeah, that stays on the list. That gets moved, bumped up a day. That gets, you know, I move that out three days. That, that can move out a, a month and I just kind of roll things forward and I can see things as uh, they they come up and it's all organized by projects in a, a number of different different views and so super useful tool $99 and and to me totally worth it the second one I have is uh, something I've been uh, using a lot in my classes at Michigan State it's called the value proposition canvas and uh, you can find that on the Strategizer website, but there's an, a number of versions you can find on the, the web, but that's the main one. So this is a simple tool that allows you to focus your thought about a new product or service or an existing product or service and look at, in terms of what we always talk about, what is the job the customer wants to do? What are the gains that they would hope to achieve? What are the pains that they would hope to eliminate? And then you look at on the other side of it, the left-hand side of it, um, you would fill in what your product or service does and then the, the, uh, the pains it gets rid of and the gains it achieves. And then you kind of look simply across and see if there's a match there and how you might tweak your product to what the customer wants to do. Incredibly useful tool when you're thinking about uh, a service service or product that that you're you're going to deliver and how you can make it better or you create it the third one is what i use for working out all the time is is kettlebells simple tool it looks like a shot put uh if you're like you know super good it might look like a a small cannonball but basically it looks like a shot put with a handle on it all ma all made of iron if you're male, you're probably looking at something that's uh, either a 12 kilogram or 16 kilogram, so that's 25 or 35 pounds. If you're if you're a woman, you're probably looking at say like eight kilograms, maybe up to 12 typically starting out, but you can you can go higher. There's a number of uh, straightforward 
exercises that you do. Um, it really helps you build up your core and your strength. And strength is uh, probably the underrated part of uh, working out as, as you get older. So uh, kettlebell is just this great basic tool that you can do a lot with. And then the last one is something that I'm really starting to appreciate, and that's the AirPods. And there's a number of reasons to like AirPods. And, uh, you know, I'm still playing with uh, with all the, the features. And I like the idea of what they can become as a platform over the next couple of years. But what I like the most is the fact that you don't have wires because I, you know, when I use other headphones now, I'll be walking around talking on the phone and, and uh, you know, catch the, catch the cord on a, a drawer or something like that and pull everything out uh, if I'm walking around. So it's, it's just a, a, a great tool that feels good when you're wearing it, does what you want, and, and to me just really fits some of those basic notions of, of cool tools. So Apple announced AirPods 2 in the past couple of weeks. You're going to buy the new ones or are you uh, are the good one the first generation still good for you? Well, my first generations are pretty new. So there's one scenario where I give them to my daughter and I buy the new ones and the other one is I just wait a little while and see kind of what new things people are starting to do on the new AirPod 2 platform. I think the killer app for me, Tom, and it might be for you as well, is if they were able to kind of, using software, be able to, to give you the noise cancellation that would work on a plane. Um, and that's sort of, if I had a hope for a, a platform that was based on, on uh, earphones or earbuds, that would be the hope for me. And then to kind of personalize the sounds that you hear, which I I think could be cool. I have no idea where that's coming, but that's that's uh, very appealing to me. So now it's time for our parting shots at one tip website or observation that you can use the second this podcast ends. Tom, take it away. Well, I feel like I'm going to do another cool tool, but this is more of a t- cool tool in progress, I think. It's not, I don't think it's completely there yet. Um, I've probably mentioned in the past on the podcast that I use the Texture app for magazine subscriptions. So we pay, I think it's uh, $15 a month, and you get unlimited subscriptions to, uh, you can unlimited use of, of two or 300 different magazines that are out there. Um, and although I don't read a ton of magazines, I read enough to find it useful, and I've, I've loved the Texture app. Well, Apple bought Texture a couple of months ago and apparently has decided to roll it into a new product that they debuted in the past week called Apple News Plus. So if you're using an iPad or an Apple device, you already have Apple News, which is their news product, which is I would say, okay. I think that I, I'm not a fan of how it recommends news to you based on what you read, because if you had just happened to look at the most frivolous topics, suddenly you're getting a lot of frivolous topics in your news. Um, but they've added News Plus to it so that not for $9.99 a month, you get the same access to the 300 magazines. You get free access to the Washington Post, to the New York Times, to the Wall Street Journal. Uh, there's a lot m- more newspapers coming. You know, if, if Apple is any indication, it's going to get better. It's going to get more. I'm not a total fan because they haven't brought over all of the great features that made Texture the great app that it was. I hope that comes over gradually. I hope they get to all of that. They haven't gotten to it yet, so it doesn't have everything. And then the other thing, which I think is kind of crappy, is they, they're they basically going to shut down Texture so that if you have an Android, if you have anything but an Apple device, you can't use it anymore. You won't be able to get it. I, I think that's unfair and unreasonable. I wish they'd rethink that. But uh, for those of you who have Apple devices, uh, iOS devices, um, I, I'm having fun getting used to it and looking forward to what the app comes up with in the future. Yeah, I really like this this idea as and this this product as well, Tom. And if you've, I've just reached the point where like any any experience on the a newspaper or magazine website is just soul destroying at this point. I mean, like you're chasing stuff around, they're tricking you to click on things. There's ads all over the place. You know, videos start running. It, it's 
just an assault to go to these anything, you go to those sites. So to have like a one place I can go to get content would be great. So my, my parting shot is a notion called personal quarterly offsides comes from uh, uh, Greg McCown, uh, who wrote a book called essentialism. So the idea is that uh, if you work at a business or, or a law firm, you might have these offsides and they might be once a year, sometimes more often if for your team. But the idea is why not take a day uh, each quarter for yourself and uh, do an offsite. And you might do different things. So you might kind of look at what you've done, uh, you know, set your goals, uh, look at things, look at metrics. You might listen to some uh, webinars or podcasts like you're having your own keynote speaker. You may devote it to a theme, um, that sort of thing. And I've really enjoyed this. I've been doing this the last couple of years. I just did one the past weekend where I just got a whole bunch of ideas out and then really tried to edit them into priorities. And I just, I just find these really useful and kind of fun and it kind of takes you away from the, the stress and strain of, you know, the daily grind. And so that wraps it up for this edition of the Kennedy Mile Report. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. You can find show notes for this episode at tkmreport.com. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to our podcast in iTunes or on the Legal Talk Network site, where you can find archives of all of our previous podcasts. If you'd like to suggest a topic, we've got a Google Doc for that. Go to bit.ly forward slash two, capital Q, capital N, WH, capital Z, U. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can reach out to us on LinkedIn. Or remember, we have a phone line for taping of B-segment questions. Remember, we always love to get questions for our B-segment. You can reach us at 720-441-6820. So until the next podcast, I'm Tom Mile. And I'm Dennis Kennedy, and you've been listening to the Kennedy Mile Report, a podcast on legal technology with an internet focus. If you like what you heard today, please rate us in Apple Podcasts. And we'll see you next time for another episode of the Kennedy Mile Report on the Legal Talk Network. Thanks for listening to the Kennedy Mile Report. Check out Dennis and Tom's book, The Lawyer's Guide to Collaboration Tools and Technologies, Smart Ways to Work Together, from ABA Books or Amazon. And join us every other week for another edition of the Kennedy Mile Report, only on the Legal Talk Network.